Hello, hello. Facebook. And I might upload this video on Instagram. And of course, my YouTube followers, right? So make sure as you tune in, you hit the like button, subscribe button, and digital heart button if you're watching this on Instagram. If I upload this on Instagram. So I'm um I'm on my way to um get a prescription for my daughter. For those who follow me know that she had oral um surgery on uh Thursday or last week. So besides it being a Memorial Day weekend and besides my daughter having um oral surgery, um then I um really just took vacation days off to tend to her and to just uh, refresh and relax myself and so if you email me your credit report which I have like 20 emails and waiting um, and queue for people that want um, you know credit good morning Curtis um, so if you email me your credit report I have about 20 emails uh, in queue again my, my daughter had surgery and it's Memorial Day weekend right um, I never do work on Sundays. I'm, I'm just going to start putting it and saying that on my videos. Please do not, unless you want to text me a testimonial, please do not text me on a Sunday. Even if it's just, have you received my email? That is just my family time, my worship time with God, and my, my leisure time. That's, you know, um, even God needed a day of rest. And so please don't, especially if you're just saying, I just want to know if you received my email. I'm, I'm letting you all know that I have received emails. Um, I have about 20. Um, and then I'm working on um, some of my clients that I already paid. I think I have three affidavits that I'm going to mail out before 430 today and get those done. And then I will check email. So if you're watching this video, I will respond to your email um, that you sent. So, into the topic, into the topic, um, why I think doing your own taxes right is easier than doing credit. Even though a lot of big businesses teach just the opposite, I'm going to tell you why. Number one, I don't do my own taxes. I would never do my own taxes because I have business tax deductions. And if I try to do it myself, uh, I know I will be losing out on thousands of dollars right so if you're coming in hit the like button if you're watching on um on um youtube subscribe and if you're watching this on instagram or facebook make sure you hit show some digital love hit the heart button right show some digital love and so uh although i would never do my taxes because i think it would cost me thousands and thousands of dollars but if you're if you, but we do know that you can you can go to kiki next door Thank you for the digital love. And you can drop Kiki off $125 to do your taxes right. Especially if it's something simple. Because, you know, they tell you if you get the software exactly what numbers to plug in. If you're not a person that has business tax dedu deductions. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Mr. Pointer. I'm sorry. Um, and so, if you're a person that's been taught, you know... Um, doing taxes is easier than credit then this this must be and probably why because i tell people all the time what they do is not what i do right what they do is not what i do uh first of all number one i do a credit sweep what's a credit sweep if you need uh, uh immediate results within five days um that may have ident um, resulted in um identity theft so that's a very very quick uh expedite expedious um um services that i provide number two thank you for the digital love thank you so much uh, i do creative reversal right i do creative reversal creative reversal is when you have uh more positive marks on an account or a line than you have negative right so let's say you've been paying on time as agreed for two three years um 35 percent of your credit score is based off of payment history and the age of um, how old accounts are, right? That makes up 35%. And so um, once you do a credit reversal on any account, right, 
if if it's account that has went into charge out because you haven't paid in the last six months, uh, what should be credit? What what items, for example, should be credit reversal? It should be late payments and charge offs at certain time because let's say you've had a great account. Um, let me give me some digital digital love, you all, because I'm seeing low network connection popping up, so I want to make sure this is still recording. Okay, now it says connection available. Um, so late payments and charge offs can be reversed. Um, I see a lot of people for the last six months haven't paid on the account, but th let's say they've had that uh, credit card account uh, or um, charge card account for six, seven years. You don't want all of that history gone and, let's say, and you paid in good standing. And I describe credit, credit reversal like this. Um, let's say you have a couple uh, blemishes, right, on your skin, on your face, whether um, you have blemishes on your skin, on your face, you would not, uh, or on your nose, let's say you have a wart or a bump on your nose, you wouldn't cut your entire nose off, would you? Right, you wouldn't cut your entire nose off. What you would do is fix that, that blemish or that mark. And that's what credit reversal does. Uh, if you have um, two or three 30 day late payments, right? Instead of deleting all of their positive payment history, um, you update it because you want to keep that that big chunk of 35 percent uh, paid as agreed. You want to keep that good history of your credit line to build a good credit score. Then it's credit removal. Things that that should just be removed and deleted includes um, okay, low network connection again. So we're trying to get in a better network connection. But I keep talking because I think it's saying it's still recording. It just comes in and out, in and out. So then you have uh, credit removal or what I call deletion, right? Credit removal or what I call deletion, that's uh, bankruptcies, right? You know, your Chapter 7 bankruptcies uh, will stay on your credit report up to 10 years, right? Chapter 7 bankruptcy will stay on your credit report. It will keep you in bondage for 10 years. Chapter um, 13 will only stay in your credit report keep you in bondage for seven years so that's the difference between credit reversal and credit removal uh, reversal is a deletion of accounts like bankruptcies sometimes charge offs um, should just be flat out um, removed instead of reverse because you have more negative showing than positive so again if if it's difficult for you to read the tax code um, it's going to be even more difficult for you to understand and read the Fair Credit Reporting Act laws. Why is that? Because it was written by uh, highly uh, sophisticated people like attorneys. If you ever look at the Fair Credit Reporting Act, um, you can Google that. Look at look at the Fair Credit Reporting Act laws. It's written almost like the King James Bible. It's, it's written in that type of um, language and literature. And so if you're not able to translate and put that in layman's terms of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, then you don't know what law fits what situation. Like to dispute a, a child, um, let's say um, a, ch a child um, support, you, there's a law under the Fair Credit Reporting Act that goes with that. And so now you have to know the law and the language, right? To d dispute a, a repo, a repossession. Well, when I look at a credit report, um, I disputed repossessions and got them deleted in, in different ways, such as sometimes the account numbers were incomplete. Um, sometimes the balances was were, were not correct, right? Um, sometimes the, um, the, the, the last payment due, it depends on Sometimes the paperwork required to file a re repossession was not filed accurately. And so nobody's repossession is the same. That's why I carefully analyze it. And whatever angle or strategy I use to get the best results, those are the strategies that I implement. So um, now, I'm going to say this and then I'm logging off. Um, I tell people all the time also that if you make under six figures, right, if you make under six figures, you're the one that need credit the most. If you're a person who's planning on ever getting other uh, positive cash flow and other streams of income, um, there's no way I could believe that if you make under six figures a year, 
that you are investing in anything that's bringing you a rate of return that would allow you to leave your job or to pay your mortgage or to pay your rent or your car note nor your vehicle note. There's no way. If you're making under six figures a year, I believe you have enough cash flow to make investments. Thank you for the digital love that will give you a rate of return to either totally pay your rent, your mortgage, whether it be $1,300 a month, $900 a month, where you have something you're investing in that's bringing you back on a monthly basis, $900, $1,300, or $2,500 a month. If you're making under a hundred thousand dollars, there's no way you can convince me that. Um, you, 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 you. There's no way unless you're living with your parents and you don't have a, a, a mortgage or a rent, uh, or you're living a very, very frugal lifestyle. And it's very difficult to live a frugal lifestyle now because the prices on goods and services have increased. Right, the prices of gas has increased. Groceries have increased. Um, they even charge you almost two dollars now just to go to the gas pump to get air to put in your tire. Right? They even take credit cards for this. So there's no way you can convince me with inflation that if you don't have good credit, that you have the extra capital you need. There's no way you can convince me that if you have a side hustle, you're selling food out of your house, uh, you're making, you're baking, you're doing customized cakes or pastries or um or you you selling grandmother's recipe uh and or you're driving trucks there's no way you can tell me that if you make under a hundred thousand dollars you don't need the credit and capital to, to expand your business to get better products to get better uh, machinery in so you can bake more efficiently and make more money you can't you can't convince me of that and so this is what happened most rich people, and I'm saying most because I do know some people that make over a hundred thousand dollars a year that have bad credit, right? But most rich people um, use credit. Use, and when I say credit, I mean capital. Capital is OPM, others people's money, or the bank's money, right? Your credit card, Bank of America, Chase. There's just money that you're getting from banks, so. The rich people, they use the bank's money to invest. And what do they do with their own money? They don't put their own money at risk of investment. They stash their cash. They stack their cash and some type of investment that still is paying, that's growing their money while they're using the bank's money to make investments. Whether your investment is in your business, um, truck driving, um, selling food at your house, whether your investment is uh, uh, in real estate, they use the bank money that they get from credit to make those investments. And then with their money, they stack it somewhere to where it's growing interest and it's liquidity, meaning that it's liquid, it's cash. When they get ready for that day, not something that's tied up in a Roth IRA, or some type of savings plan or your 401k if they get ready for their cash that day they can pull their cash out that's sitting somewhere and growing interest on it and use it immediately not some tied up in some type of investments so there's no way you can tell me if you're making under 100k thank you so much um that you have some type of investments going on that's worthwhile or worth of discussion and it's just no way the importance of credit these days. See, people that talk against credit, they don't understand it. Credit gets you vehicle insurance. Thank you for the digital love. Uh, vehicle insurance um, is, is uh, also tied into being based now on life insurance, premium, how much you pay out. Uh, your homeowner's insurance is looked at credit. Your uh, Some people are not going to medical appointments because they don't have the credit and or the cash to afford that their doctor so they putting off their doctor's appointment because they don't have the money or the credit to go in and uh and and, and, and pay for those services right so um credit now to live in the better zip codes where your children or grandchildren are going to school is needed right now if you tell me that um you got an apartment and you didn't need your credit all you needed was cash. I, I would really want to ask you what zip code did you are you living in? Because the better apartments in the better areas, right, 
and the better living places, residential places, you are going to need credit. They don't care about how much cash you have. They don't care. They're going to run a background and a credit check because they don't want to put you in their apartment and then three, four months later, they have to evict you because you're not worth, you, you're, you're proving that you are not a trustworthy person that will pay agreements as agreed. Right. You can't get a nice home uh, without credit. You can't get a nice vehicle without credit. You're getting these vehicles at high interest rates because that's what your credit would afford you. Right. And so uh, think of credit more than just in a method to go out and buy stuff. Critic is bigger than that and is more powerful than that. So thank you all for tuning in again. Make sure you hit like and share. Uh, if you didn't watch the beginning of this, I have about um, 20 emails I have to check. I'm here now at the doctor's office. My daughter had or surgery um, and with the Memorial Day weekend. So I will get to those emails and I have about three clients affidavits that I have to mail out. Thank you for the digital love. Hello, Fred. Hello. How are you? And so people think of credit differently. Um, and also, please don't contact me by text or anything on a Sunday. I don't care about the email, but my direct communication phone through text messages, please do not text me on Sundays regarding anything with credit. It's nothing. The credit agencies are not open. It's nothing I can do. And that's my time for my for God and my family and just for my Sabbath day of, of getting some rest right. And um, and so for uh, everyone that emailed me, yes, I've received your emails. Um, I will respond hopefully by this evening. Depends on, um, you know, how my day goes. But that's, that's my plan. That's my intent. If not, it'd be first thing tomorrow because I do have about 20 emails that I have to look at. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for having an open mindset about the power of credit. And use credit not to buy things that, that lower in value, right? Use credit to buy things that um, appreciate that will bring you more money in return for what you're putting in. You can get the bank's money as low as 0% interest rate and get a rate of return from eight to 15 or even higher percent. Some people can get 100% return on their money through investments by using the bank's money, by having a great credit score. All right, you all have a great, great day. Queen of credit, hit like and hit share, hit the heart button. Thank you for the digital love.